Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on implementing high availability solutions with Windows Server 2019. We have reached the final section of the course and that is section 7 in which we are going to discuss about network load balancing. And in this first video we are going to talk about configuring NLB prerequisites. But first of all, let's see what actually network load balancing is. So NLB is the first of our two technologies here when uh, we're talking about native high availability solutions inside of Windows Server. Network load balancing is a solution that is predominantly associated with IIS and web services, but you can use it uh, really for any kind of services that you like. It is most commonly associated with services that are considered to be stateless in that it really doesn't matter which of the servers in a load balancing solution a user would connect to. That state information is perhaps kept in some other location of uh, the greater service that you're supporting. For that reason, why IIS and web services tend to be the solution uh, that is used most for network load balancing. Although NLB clusters have been used in the past, for uh, other technologies like many years ago with remote desktop services, also with uh, VPNs in some cases. I believe at some point even the uh, TMG, the Threat Management Gateway, was a solution that was uh, used. And so NLB is really just um, a sort of a generic uh, solution that you could use for load balancing anything as long as you know what port that you need to pass and separate across uh, all the different machines that exist in that cluster. So in this section, we're going to go uh, through an end-to-end -end installation of uh, Windows Network Load Balancing across two different hosts, that is NLB1 and NLB2. In order to accomplish that, we will begin by taking a look at some of the NLB prerequisites. Now, uh, the biggest uh, prerequisite uh, for installing NLB is actually getting NLB feature installed on each of the servers that uh, will participate in the NLB cluster. But uh, there are also some uh, network prerequisites uh, that uh, you really can't ignore. And a lot of this has to do with, honestly, just some of the artifacts uh, or the way NLB was originally crafted. One of the interesting things about NLB you'll find is that you'll find here uh, in a second that uh, uh, it has what appears to be one of the oldest uh, still remaining consoles uh, in the Windows operating system. I don't think the NLB console has changed or evolved in many uh, different OS versions. And because of that, because uh, of just the way it was originally configured, there are a couple of uh, different decisions that you'll have to make on the network side based on how you actually want uh, information to get from uh, that user to the machines that participate in the cluster. So we're mainly talking about uh, this arrow here, right? So we're talking about the connection between your router or so your switching infrastructure basically uh, your routing infrastructure and the machines that are in that cluster in order for nlb to do its job nlb actually has to uh, kind of spoof the network without getting into too technical detail here telling the network that when a user attempts to connect up to a service that user is going to come in and speak to the router and the switch infrastructure that exists just prior to your NLB servers. And for that communication to uh, actually get uh, to those servers, because uh, there is uh, no master server that is uh, directing traffic between all the machines that participate, you have to make a decision about which kind of network protocol you're going to use. In this version of NLB, you have three different choices to make or um, three different selections uh, that you can choose for uh, which network protocol to use. You can use the unicast uh, as the mechanism uh, for uh, users to connect up to the appropriate uh, NLB server. You can use multicast 
or you can use IGMP multicast. And each one of these three protocols comes with some pros and cons for uh, what you'll get and what you have to pay in order to choose uh, one over the other. So let me talk about uh, the profiles uh, and uh, the, the pros and cons of each of these uh, three protocols in turn. The first of which being our first protocol, Unicast. Now, Unicast is one-to-one -one communication between two different machines. And uh, the neat part about using Unicast uh, with an NLB cluster is the fact that it will always work. And it's always going to work, and it's also going to require no special network configuration. So if you do not have a great relationship with your network team, so to speak, or if you've uh, got uh, a network team that's not uh, willing to work with you uh, on the extra configurations that are required for some of the other uh, protocols to use the other protocols, Unicast is going to always work. And in fact, although some of the uh, other protocol perhaps better to use in a network uh, production environment, we're actually going to use uh, the unicast model in our uh, demonstrations here um, in a second, because without those advanced network functions, there's just no way to actually show you how it uh, works, right? So uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, one way the way you're probably going to use this uh, in production is uh, much uh, the same or another. Now, in order to use the unicast model, the unicast protocol, you're going to have to have a second uh, NIC on each of your NLB hosts. Now, the bad part about using unicast is uh, the fact that for unicast to work, there has to be this communication that occurs across all the different machines uh, that participate in the cluster. And in order to accomplish that, there is a subnet flooding activity that happens, uh, which is essentially all the traffic to all the hosts needs to go to all the hosts. And a byproduct of that is that all the traffic to all the hosts also needs to go to every other machine on the subnet. So now, if you uh, participated back in uh, the early days of uh, the IPX protocol or some of the early protocols, like uh, some of Apple's uh, early protocols, you know that uh, subnet flooding can actually have a disastrous effect on your network. And so while Unicast is easy to set up, uh, the more traffic that you have coming into that subnet, the more that traffic is going to be seen and have to be dropped by all the other machines that exist on the subnet as well. So there's a good and uh, there's a bad here because you can set this up really easy, but it's uh, easy to do here in a demonstration environment because there's no uh, like uh, Cisco language that we have to incorporate on the switches and routers to accomplish this. But in a production environment world, you can see where this can uh, actually cause uh, a reduction of uh, network performance because of uh, all the flooding uh, of this traffic across uh, the network. Now, Unicast uh, in most uh, production scenarios uh, just isn't going to fly because of that problem. And so because of that, we have uh, another option here, and that is using multicast. Now, multicast makes your job a little bit easier because uh, there's no requirement for a second uh, network card on your um, NLB host, but multicast doesn't really solve the network flooding problem, but uh, requires some special network configurations in order for, uh, for the multicast uh, protocol to work. Your network has to actually support multicast in order for it to work there's also some other routing entries and uh, that are basically required in order to support multicast. So, whereas uh, multicast makes your job easier as a server admin, it, uh, it makes a harder job for the network team because all of this extra effort uh, that they've got to uh, go through and really, does not solve the problem that is flooding uh, the subnet. It is for that reason that the best practice for uh, for use of an NLB cluster is pretty much 
in any production environment these days mandates the use of IGMP multicast. So the Internet Group Management Protocol multicast because the IGMP multicast uses some additional technologies that do not cause subnet flooding and does not require a second NIC on your NLB host. But you do have to have those additional configurations and you do have to have actually network equipment that supports IGMP multicast. Now, these days, in most enterprises, it is more than likely that you're going to have these kinds of uh, networking um, equipment that does support IGMP multicast. In smaller environments with less uh, than enterprise type network equipment, that can be definitely uh, be a question mark, uh, to be honest. So if you have the equipment and if you have the relationship uh, with the network team or the ability to make these configurations yourself, IGMP multicast is the case of an NLB cluster is definitely the way to go. Now, that said, when we get into uh, the demonstration part of this uh, section, I'm going to show you the unicast model because in the VMware workstation world where we're uh, doing these demos, I just don't have the uh, ability to demo this, to mock this up using IGMP multicast. And uh, the end result is effectively the same when we're just doing it uh, for long enough to be able to see that how basically an NLB cluster works. So whereas uh, I'm going to show you unicast, the difference between that and uh, IGMP multicast in an NLB world is nothing more than uh, choosing one radio button over the other.